Welcome back to Walking the Line from Research to Practice. This is episode two. I'm Salim Rezai, an ER physician down here in San Antonio, Texas. And in episode two, we're going to be talking about the PEG trial, which was a prospective trial, not a randomized clinical trial. And in this study, they were looking at adjusting D-dimers for clinical probability and their ability to rule out venothromboembolism. Now, once a patient was enrolled in the study, what the authors did is they applied a Wells score. And I like this because Wells is very well validated and something that we use all the time. It doesn't mean that there aren't other tools we can use to risk assess patients, but I like the fact that they use this one. And what they did is they put patients into three categories, either low risk, moderate risk, or high risk. Once the patients were put into a category, the D-dimer was adjusted. So for the low-risk patients, a typical cutoff would have been 500 nanograms per milliliter, but in this study, they went up to 1,000 nanograms per milliliter. In other words, if your D-dimer was less than 1,000, then you were ruled out for venothromboembolism. For the moderate risk group, they left it at 500 nanograms per ml. And then for the high risk group, they didn't do a D-dimer. They just went straight to imaging, which makes sense because we know that even with a negative D-dimer in a high risk group where the preclinical test probability is high, you can have a false negative. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the low risk group and the moderate risk group. They followed these patients up for 90 days, and what they ended up finding is that there were no pulmonary embolisms at 90 days in either the low-risk or the moderate-risk group. There were two DVTs in patients who had D-dimers of greater than 1,000, both of which were in the low-risk group. An important point in the study is that they also decreased CT imaging they decreased from 51.9% down to 34.3%. So this is a nearly 20% decrease, and this is great. So one, it's lower cost. Two, it's less radiation for the patients. And three, we know that we're scanning more people. We're finding more PEs, but we haven't affected mortality at all. And the reason for this may be that we're just finding these insignificant subsegmental PEs that we end up anticoagulating, which has its own harms, but... In this study, what they found was that we were able to decrease by 20% and they still missed no PEs. So that's a great finding from this study. Now, a couple of things I want to mention. So first of all, this was a convenient sample of patients. We, we don't know how many patients they actually screened through to get them enrolled in this study. And that's important because, you know, maybe they self-selected some patients, but we don't really know. The second thing is, is that this was a really low-risk population when you look at the numbers. So when you look at the low risk group, by far and away, 85% of the patients enrolled in this study were low risk. There was only 13% in the moderate risk, and there was only 2% in the high risk. And I would like to see this done again in a population where there's a higher prevalence of disease and to see if this pans out. The other issue with this is that because the numbers were so small in the moderate and high risk, although I would argue they didn't really do anything different than we normally do in clinical practice, they used a typical 500 nanogram per ml cutoff for their D-dimer in the moderate risk, and they went straight to imaging in the high risk. So really, this is a study of low-risk patients and adjusting that D-dimer up to 1,000 as the new cutoff. The second issue is that this excluded pregnant patients, so we can't extrapolate the results to pregnant patients at all. So before I get to the bottom line, there's something I want to mention here, and that this is not the first study looking at D-dimer adjustments in risk assessment of patients. We have age-adjusted D-dimers, which have now been studied in multiple trials and seems to be okay. ASEP actually uh, supports the use of age-adjusted D-dimer. We have multiple studies using something called the YEARS algorithm, which is where you ask three questions and you put people into a low risk or a high risk, and they also adjusted their D-dimer for the low risk group, and it also seemed to pan out. And this is now another type of study just done in a different way. So the bottom line for me, risk-adjusted D-dimer is ready for prime time. I think we have multiple studies now. We have different ways of looking at adjusted D-dimers. We have age-adjusted. We have the years protocol, as I've already stated. And now we have this study. 
The second thing is, is it, it seems that when we adjust our D-dimer in this low risk group, we also seem to decrease imaging, which is not a bad thing because we, like I've said before, we know that we're imaging too many people. Now, one last thing I would like to leave you guys with is that I'm telling you that this is ready for prime time, but before you go start doing this in clinical practice, I think it's important that you have discussions within your system, within your department, with the pulmonologist, with the hematologist, anybody who would be involved in the care of these patients, and you want to make sure that everybody agrees. You cannot be a cowboy in the wild, wild west and start doing this on your own because I've already stated they missed two DVTs. So if you start missing cases and nobody else is practicing this from a medical legal standpoint, at least in the U.S., you don't have a leg to stand on. So before you start applying this, which I think you should, this is a discussion that needs to be had at a higher level for macro change within your system. If you want a more nuanced breakdown with all the little details, head over to RebelEM, www.rebelem.com. Anand Swami Nathan did a fantastic breakdown of this paper. All you have to do is when you go to the website, go over to the right side of the page and under the search, put in pegged. And when you put in pegged, it should pull up the post for you. Well, that's all I have for you for the PEG study. Let me know what your thoughts are. Is this something you think we should definitely be doing? Or is this something that you think we shouldn't be doing? And until next time.